right here more than 50 years ago when provincial geologist at the time mr david baird lobbied our premier at the time mr joey smallwood for a park on the west coast of newfoundland now we've seen western brook pond and in these craggy old walls he saw the story of the mountains now the park today envelops 1805 square kilometers of the gulf of st louis lowlands as well as the long range mountains now the history of this national park began right here and so does our journey today this is a billion year old story of sea level change and earth movements water pure and clean and the life that it supports and these lofty cliffs ahead actually mark the front of the long range escarpment and in the days before electronic navigation these cliffs were used as landmarks by sailors and fishermen out to sea and on a clear day much like today can be seen as far away as 48 kilometers or about 30 miles our sister ship the westbrook 2 that one has a little bit of a different story we didn't have enough snow and ice to support the weight of a boat that size that's our sister ship that we left back there at the dock that was also brought in in several separate pieces but it was flown in by a heavy lift helicopter and it was assembled in our boathouse now guys you can see our boathouse over here to the right hand side of the pond that big building over there that is our boathouse that's where both of these here boats were built harbor's shelter from the easterly and southeasterly winds and sometimes hit gale force here in the fall season. Now the hunters were hunting for moose, caribou, hare, and a variety of waterfowl for their winter food stores. The trappers were trapping for mink, fox, lynx, and even some pine marten. And the fishermen would fish the pond as well as the brook itself for speckled trout, Atlantic salmon, Winninish, which is a type of landlocked salmon, and even some arctic char. percent of western brook pond is below sea level it contains only fresh water it is clear deep and pristine the deepest point in this pond is 575 feet or 174 meters and now to illustrate just how pure this water actually is i'm going to tell you a short story 
when the park staff are testing our water pumping systems back at our waiting area. They're having trouble with the tanks detecting when they were full. Therefore, they overflowed. Now, at first, they thought that this was a malfunctioning sensor. What they later come to realize were the sensors were actually designed to be triggered by the electrical conductivity in the water. But because the dissolved materials or ions in this water are so low, this water actually does not conduct electricity. Now, biologists would call this an ultra-oligotrophic lake. And what this big word simply means is the water here is not very productive. Therefore, it doesn't support much marine life or plant life. Now, that doesn't mean we don't have any fish species here in the pond. We do have all the fish species that I mentioned back at Snug Harbor. You just won't find the volume or density that you would expect to find in a body of water this size. Now guys, I'm going to get your attention over here to the right or the opposite side of the pond. You're going to see a perfect example of what's known as a hanging valley. Now this here valley was formed when a small tributary glacier flowed into the main western growth glacier. Carving out this here valley which appears to be hanging in the air above the pond. And now guys, this also gives us a great example of what this field may look like without water. You're going to notice its deep center, its near vertical sides, and the typical U-shaped profile of the glacier carved valley.
Pero need pa kag license. Para matukas sa Chris Morn Mountains. Right on, baby. Parking area. Check it out. See you later.